Come on down to Cine Massacre Video and join us all month for our Monster Madness special. We've got horror, 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 horror. Movies for kids, movies for mommies and daddies. We've got the booest releases, the hauntest video games, even laser disc. Having a problem making a selection? Our friendly ghosts are all always there to hell out and with our state-of-the-art database it's easy to find exactly what you're spooking for even if it sucks blood today's creature rental from dusk till dawn the evil gecko brothers are on a spree of murder and mayhem when on the run from the law they take a former preacher and his family hostage forcing them to drive them over the border and then vampires happen wait vampires really Okay. Starring George Booney, Quentin Tarrant Screamo, Harvey Kite Hell, and Booliet Boois, featuring Cheech Marin, Cheech Marin, and Cheech Marin. Cine Massacre Video, in the Voorhees Memorial Shopping Center, next to Caldor. So what's your favorite scene in any horror film? Right there, The oh, Shining. The Shining, which scene though? Give me the bat, Wendy. Oh, uh, Wendy, uh, give me the bat. I'm not gonna hurt you, I'm hey. just gonna bash you. I was just in the uh, adult mom and dad section, oh. and you mistakenly put this on the shelf, which I understand because of all the foot fetish stuff. Oh, okay, um, yeah, yeah. So I definitely like to rent and hopefully talk about From Dust Till Dawn. Sure, yes. When I first saw From Dust Till Dawn, uh, a friend of mine, uh, let me borrow it and he said oh check this out it's this really cool vampire movie so the first hour of it or so i'm thinking like well where's the vampires <laughs> so i'm like waiting for them but i've heard everybody else mostly has had the opposite experience where they didn't know it was going to be vampires and i always felt well it's called from dusk till dawn like wouldn't that yeah. mean but I don't, but what were your guys experiences with this movie um i'm not sure when i first saw this i feel like i knew there were vampires in it Mm-hmm. Like someone might have mentioned it, and I remember mm-hmm. watching it, going like, "Is this a vampire?" Oh, like, so I, similar to my experience. Yeah, yeah. Where like I got the idea, and I'm just like, uh, and then a vampire shows mm-hmm. up. And like, yeah. oh, okay, all right, mm-hmm. now I get it. All right, this makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it when it drastically changes. Yeah. What do you think? Um, you know, back in the early 2000s, because I didn't see it in the 90s when it came out, mm-hmm. but I was getting big in the like Tarantino films and like you know anyone else who's working at a movie theater and all that yeah. crap would be. And I was like, oh, let me check this one out. He didn't direct it, but he, I think he like did the screenplay and he's yeah, he it and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And uh, I checked it out. I'm like, oh, so it's like natural born killers blends into Dead Alive. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, so yeah. I was pretty into it. Yeah, I love this movie, by the way. Oh, you know what? I could tell. You know what? You know what? Look, <laughs> so I would, I know I would love going. to tell the story about how Mike first because I saw his face. I saw everything. So this is back in college. So I was like, hey, Mike, you know, I want to show you this movie from dusk till dawn. And uh, I didn't tell him it was a vampire movie. I didn't tell him anything about it. And I don't know if you even knew anything about the I movie. I don't know anything. Yeah. You know, so, you know what's funny? Like, before, before you tell this, okay. reminds me of another time, too. Um, we watched Basket Case. And I actually had no fucking clue of oh. anything about the movie. And we watched the movie, and that part comes on. With the with the character, and, and I was like freaking out because I was like, "Oh my god, I can't!" Like I couldn't believe it, and everybody in the room was like, "Oh come on!" Like you, you obviously knew what it was, and I like really didn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so I'm watching uh, from Dust Till Dawn with Mike, and this is back in college. We're watching. I think you're really enjoying it too. Like we're watching the whole part, you know, in, in the first hour or whatever, and, and and you're getting more and more interested. I'm waiting for the the, the vampire part to come to see how you react to it. And um, I didn't expect much. I mean, I thought maybe you knew. I wasn't sure. As soon as they get to the bar, and like it's the, at the part when uh, George Clooney's like doing the shots and everything, and they're at the bar, and, you're, and you stop the movie, and you're like, James, we gotta go get some whiskey right now. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, but but we really, you gotta keep watching. He's like, no, no, James, we will. I'm loving this movie, but we really need some whiskey to go. In. It was so a, it we, was a bar scene, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah. I think what, are you, what are you gonna do? They probably give you the idea. Yeah. So so we go out and we get this bottle of whiskey and we come back. 
And then uh, I, I never had whiskey in my life, by the way. So, <laughs> they, like, so and Mike does, does, doesn't even have like shot glasses. He's just pouring it into like these regular <laughs> glasses. So he hands me this glass of whiskey, and I'm just like, I smell it. I'm like, oh boy, it's strong. Whatever. I take a, a sip of it. I'm, I feel it burning and everything. And oh. I'm like, oh boy, this is rough. And then as we're sitting there, we're drinking the whiskey. Then the vampire shit goes down. Oh. <laughs> and as it's happening, you know, like Salma Hayek's face morphs into that like weird like serpent kind of yeah. vampire. And then like heads are being ripped off and it's a whole scene. And I look over at Mike and he's just like blinking his eyes, looking at like, <laughs> James, what the fuck just happened to this movie? And then I remember you just burst out laughing and <laughs> I was, uh, it was perfect. It was like the perfect way that that could have gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. I thought it was just gonna be like a like a regular like because they had mm -hmm. this, this scene earlier where they're like uh, rob rob like a liquor store or something like that yeah. or a convenience store. Mm -hmm. I just had no clue where it was going at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah, and the first act like it, it really or the first like half or whatever, it, it's really great. Like I think now I kind of like the first half a little bit better. Mm -hmm. but I don't know. I mean it is. It's two different movies, but sort of bridged by that Salma it's, Hayek dance. Yeah, it, yeah. It's interesting because there's movies, like I would consider Natural Born Killers, that did the whole first part better, and then there's movies like Dead or Alive or other vampires that did the second part better. Mm -hmm. But because it's blended and you have the same characters go through both situations, yeah. it's kind of a lot of fun. It's mm -hmm. a fun yeah. movie. Yeah, I, this is probably one of my favorite vampire movies, like mm -hmm. right up there. It's just Me got too. everything you want <laughs> yeah. out of a vampire thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like once it becomes vampires, yeah. they go full vampire. Like yeah. it's just <laughs> oh, crosses. Yeah. <laughs> and I love, I love George Clooney. Like his character is so great that even when it switches to vampire, it, to him it's like, well, there's some other bullshit shit I gotta deal yeah, with. Yeah. And he has that great line. Like, like, I don't, well, yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. All right, I don't want to hear that yeah, you don't believe yes. in fucking vampires because I don't believe in fucking vampires, but these are vampires. Jeez, I do yeah. believe in what I saw and what I saw was fucking vampires. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My brother was just killed by a fucking vampire. <laughs> Oh, it's oh, so great. It really is. Uh, who who owns the rights to this movie? Uh, Robert Rodriguez, El Rey. And oh, that's like, that's it? Like, yeah, no, he like, owns studio? it. Like, um, oh, okay. I'll talk about it later, oh. like the TV show and stuff, but he still owns it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But I'm always wondering, what would you, because it's hard to see it differently, but like, what would happen if there were no vampires? Like, let's say they get to the bar, yeah. then like, what happens after? Because they pretty much got away. They, they were... Um, it would have been another bar shootout, much like Desperado, which mm -hmm. Robert Arriga's already filmed. Yeah. Like, there would have mm -hmm. been some kind of conflict. and Yeah, because mm -hmm. he, he would have confronted those guys. Because those mm -hmm. guys, remember, they came up to him after the dance yeah. anyway. Um, which I didn't, I don't really like the scene where they come up and, like, they confront him like, hey, this guy kicked me and this guy punched yeah. me, let's beat him up. I kind of wanted Selma Hayek to transform during the dance and then get Tarantino. Because if two guys pulled guns in that bar, mm -hmm. you know, Sex Machine and six other guys would have shot him full of lead, mm -hmm. but, but I don't know. I do kind of like that because if you watch like his like Desperado and El Mariachi, you're expecting like a big bar shootout, mm -hmm. and I like that it twist it and it's yeah. vampires. <laughs> That's and you're true. like, whoa, this is not what I was expecting. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. a solid. Well, the it, cast is great too. I love yeah. how like oh yeah, I love how everybody in that bar seems like they were waiting for this to happen because they're all ready. Yeah. Like, yeah. like you know, Tom Savini's got yeah. the whip and like, you know, the cock gun and like everybody. The gun that oh, makes no like, sense. Yeah, exactly. Can we talk about the gun? Yeah, yeah. Like the barrels are supposed to be balls, but they don't connect to like yeah. the shaft of the oh, gun. So yeah, yeah. How, do the, how do the bullets get in there? Did, did, <laughs> didn't he have a story that he told you about the, the cock gun about being in the army and how it like, uh, jerks him back? I just, well, 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 oh, actually, I asked him if there was going to be any recoil, but uh, he, uh, <laughs> he was like, uh, no. He was like, there's no recoil. Oh, uh, that's right. He's like, what? You don't know shit. Like, he was like, <laughs> yeah, he's hilarious. Well, just, um, just everyone in the, like when people yeah. think of from dusk till dawn, everyone thinks of when they get to the bar to the ending. Mm -hmm. No one really remembers like, oh, what happened to that poor bank teller? Yeah, uh, that was like, like dark. What, yeah. what happened to the liquor store guy, or what happened to all that? Like, no one cares about yeah, that. Yeah. Or, wait, wait. What, what about the border crossing? They only <laughs> care about things that happen in the bar. Here, here's confusing. But, they kill Sheriff McGraw. And then he comes back later in Planet Terror and Kill Bill. Like, the character's still alive. Oh, yeah. Even the, though the, his first appearance, yeah. he died. The, the, the police officer in the yeah. very beginning. Yeah, Michael Parks. Yeah. He plays <laughs> that character in multiple movies. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I used to dislike that beginning, that yeah. opening. I love it now. But, yeah. like, he walks in and it's so quiet. He mumbles through the entire thing. Yeah. yeah. But he's so great. Did you break for lunch or nothing? I'm by myself today. ate my lunch out of the microwave. Jesus H. Christ, Pete. 
When you gonna learn that microwave food to kill you faster than a bullet? I mean, them damn burritos ain't good for nothing but a hippie. When he's high on weed. <laughs> um, but the first time I watched I'm like, this is like so boring. Like, when is something going to happen? But now yeah. I just love how it begins like he's going to be like the badass, like Clint Eastwood, like yeah. starring role. But he's nothing. He gets killed. He gets wiped out in that first scene yeah. before the credits. <laughs> <laughs> What? And when they blow up the bar, that they actually did that. Like in when they're one, walking out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not the bar. Like the comedian store. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're walking out. They actually had to do that in one take. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, the pieces of it are falling all around them yeah, when they're walking in the awesome. car. And well, much like all like a lot of Rodriguez movies, like you know, there's like it's like calm and then a bump mm -hmm. and then a bump. And then a bump, and the movie's so well edited that they, like even there's even calm scenes in the bar, mm -hmm. like when they're setting up the weapons and all that stuff. So, like there's so many great scenes, mm -hmm. um, you know, of, of just escalation in the film. Yeah, I think one of the most tense scenes for me is when they're trying to get across the border. Oh yeah. Yeah, for some reason that one's like really, I don't know, like yeah. you, there's all the vampire stuff later on. And what a smart idea with the bathroom when she's like, you know, would yeah. you mind please shut the fucking yeah. door? <laughs> yeah. And Cheech is lingering for a little too. Yeah. yeah. And, then, um, and then Seth is like impressed by it. He's like, yeah. that was a good idea. Um, what do you guys think of uh, Tarantino's acting? Like he's not really known to be an actor, but he's he kind of pulls it up. Yeah. He, he could only play a creepy weirdo. Like, yeah, yeah. thankfully, this is the character he's playing. <laughs> yeah, because he's kind of because he's he's basically like this. He's he's a serial rapist and killer. He's yeah, like a horrible like person. In this movie, but like when he when but it's a switch that goes off because then he's just kind of like just kind of weird and like mm -hmm. you know awkward. Yeah, um, it's it's really a. a an interesting character. Like he did a good job, and, mm -hmm. and like you said, it's something that only Tarantino. Yeah, could yeah. Play. yeah. Rodriguez was probably like, "Hey, can you play a guy who has a foot fetish?" And Tarantino was like, "Yeah, I can do it. I, I've, I've studied this for many years." <laughs> well, I think I think he wrote it for himself. Yeah, he Actually, definitely he wrote it for himself. Know, and I'm gonna get into this because in the commentary, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm I'll just go ahead with this. But in the commentary, they're talking about how like he's sucking on Salma Hayek's foot in the during that like dance scene. And then I think George Clooney said something to him, and, and they, he's not on the commentary, but they're yeah. talking about George Clooney once said. He's like, oh, yeah, so you wrote yourself to suck on Salma Hayek's foot, and I got to fight a giant rat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's actually a scene when she's standing on, the, when she's doing the dance on the table, she, like, backs up too far and almost, like, I guess she, she might step or, like, run into George Clooney, and he looks so sad. Yeah. Oh, like, he's, like, he's like, oh, like, it, it's so weird. Selma Hayek, that is like probably one of my favorite scenes ever at the dance scene. Oh, it definitely Until the was, foot yeah. fetish part, unless you yeah. have a foot fetish, in which case it's probably even better for you. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> like that scene, I'm like, this I, is great. I pass on the foot, but uh, <laughs> yeah. like, that's, that's Tarantino's thing, whatever. That's, that's it's, his thing. It's his thing. Yeah. Um, um, and she's cool when she turns into like the whole snake yeah. thing. I love the whole like, you're going to be my slave. And he's like, I was already yeah. married. <laughs> yeah. And I appreciate that scene now for like what it is because yeah. you needed that calm before mm -hmm. the storm. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. You guys want to go through all the characters now in the movie? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Let's go I want to start. Bottom. Yeah. Okay. First one, the best character in the whole movie is the the hotel uh, guy. They go and then he's like, "What the hell do you want?" <laughs> and he's like, "What do you think I want? You mean old fucking bastard? I want a room." And he's like, oh, "Okay." okay. <laughs> sure. And that's all you see of him. He's the best character in the movie. I like Freddie Williams. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially when he tells his Vietnam story, yeah, which yeah. must be the most amazing <laughs> story because he's miming it yeah. out yeah, yeah. for ten minutes while Sex Machine yeah. is turning into a vampire, and it's like yeah. it keeps cutting back, and he's doing like a yeah. new moment. He's telling us how he like took out all these uh -huh. people, and he's not he's not talking during this. Like there's yeah. this long <laughs> part where it cuts because the, they had to cut away to Tom Savini like being with his fang yeah, the fan, the hands, and then yeah. and then uh, <laughs> Freddie Williams. Is, is not saying a word, but just doing this, and everybody's just watching him do that. And it, <laughs> they occasionally turn to look at Tom's man, and then they turn back and go back to the store, and he's making like a new movie. Oh, oh that's so great. I, I want to see that scene with the audio sweetened, so you just hear, like, nothing but... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Just like, it's um, really awkward. As funny as it is though, I like the family. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Harvey Keitel, Julia yeah. Lewis, and uh, the spirit. kid who's clearly a John Carpenter fan because he's wearing a soft oh, yeah, yeah. 13 shirt. Uh -huh. Which is pretty much what happens where they have to put themselves into yeah. the place. And you kind of need those characters in the movie to mm -hmm. like, because you know, if George Clooney or Quentin Tarantino died, it's like, oh good, an awful person died, whatever. Yeah. Like you need someone to be like, uh -huh. oh, I hope they don't yeah. die. They're nice. I mean, it's kind of weird because uh, Julia Lewis was two years ago in Natural Born Killers. 
Yeah. So now she's playing someone who's not psych- psychopathic and younger. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, she was actually more badass, I guess, than the two guys in this film. Yeah. And more crazy. Yeah, and natural <laughs> killers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really love how you take this these dysfunctional kind of like pair of brothers who are criminals, mm. and then you have, um, you know, the, the family... And, um, you know, like one's a priest who, like, isn't a pr- priest anymore. And, yeah. like, you know. And then these characters at first, like, you know, they're kind of forced in this whole situation. Mm-hmm. But then they, they earn Seth's respect by the end of it. Yeah. Um, I thought that was really cool. Like, pretty mm-hmm. much by the time they get to the, the bar, I think that's the point when, you know, he's, he's he says the line. He's like, are you too much of a fucking loser to not know when you've won? <laughs> and then he's like, can you repeat that repeat to me? That and, then, yeah. and then he after, he's just like... I want you to have a drink with me. Yeah, like that was kind of the moment. Yeah, which is funny because you had the whiskey scene earlier where you first drank whiskey watching that movie, and then they give the whiskey to her for the first yeah. time. Like, mm. you know, I don't drink alone, kind of a situation. Yeah, what a, what I a, insist. What a horrible experience for her. Like, so what was your first time getting drunk? Oh well, I went to a bar with my family. Everyone turned into vampires, and then I shot my brother and dad. Uh, so yeah. you know, the beer, the, the alcohol was good, no. but everything else was awful. <laughs> she didn't shoot her brother and dad because they were already dead. Oh, they, right. They were already turned. <laughs> well, <laughs> which Tarantino's very happy and proud of that uh, killing the kids scene. Okay, yeah. We, we listen to the commentary. Yeah, track. so so anyway, the commentary of, on, on From Dusk Till Dawn is probably the best comment, the, the funniest, and it's pretty informative, too. It's yeah. a very good commentary, probably the best I've ever seen. It's Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino. And the thing is, Tarantino, he doesn't do um, commentaries on his own movies. Like, he yeah. does some... But you would think for such a chatty guy, like, it, it's surprising that this is the only one of his movies that I know of where he did the commentary. Yeah. I wonder if he does a bunch and the editors are like, Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Delete that. So the scene with the kid, he's like, he's like, okay, the one rule in horror films is you don't kill the kid. But in this movie, the fucking kid gets it worse than anybody. And he's just like cracking up over he's it. Like, he's like, he's comparing it to Schindler's List? Like, he said, threw Spielberg under the bus. He said Spielberg didn't even have the balls to shoot Schindler's List, which, which, no. Okay, Tarantino. I, don't Spiel- think, I think Spielberg it. had more balls. <laughs> he also says that not even in Jaws, the kid gets killed. It's like, yeah, the kid gets killed. In Jaws, I think it's he said you he just means don't like, see it. More like, he, means, see it. <laughs> he means violent on screen. Yeah, I guess. I think what he means is okay. So the kid, first of all, he has to shoot his own uh, father, yeah. stepfather, because in he in the face because he turned into a vampire, <laughs> and then the kid um, gets. Eaten by not even just like they don't just suck his blood, they're eating yeah. him alive. Yeah. And then he has to beg to his sister, <laughs> his own sister, to shoot him. Yeah. And then he explodes into like mucus, yeah. blood, and because, slime. Because he was, because I think all the, the guns had cross, yeah. crosses on the bullets. Remember they put the crosses? Oh, so, yeah, yeah. so now they were suddenly explosive I guess, bullets. Yeah. Which, that scene is one of the bad scenes in the bad effects scene in the movie because like the vampires are clearly just mannequins waiting to be exploded. Oh, okay. And the one's just standing there for like a couple frames <laughs> before it blows up. It's like, yeah. Could you, could you cut away tonight? You did the, like five you know, angles. Why did you um, linger on the one that's like... The, the, the vampires in this, especially when they're like the, the bat horde at the end, when, yeah. they, when they all transform into those like creepy ones instead of like the stripper ones, is they all look like the demons in Demon Knight. Yeah. Very, very similar. They look like they're kind of like ratish. Well, yeah. the sex machine turns into a rat. Oh, yeah, no, no, now, it's, now it's kind of like the movie Witches. Yeah. Where they all turn into rats. Um, or, uh, I never yeah. believed his real name is Sex Machine. No. no. That's like officially his name in the movie, but <laughs> I always feel like it's when, when Kate asks him, oh, so what's your name? Sex Machine. Like, he's, he's just fucking around. And he he's looks just like, like his character from Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's like, like a different guy. biker. <laughs> Uh, I love oh. the effects. K and B did the effects. They did the Evil yeah. Dead, which oh, is why Greg Nick 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. is in it as yeah. and him and Tom Savini being the two effects guys are the ones who are sort of having that like little mm-hmm. like you know uh, argument or you know whatever you call yeah. it. And I like there's like a callback to Evil Dead too because Evil Dead two they slice the guy's head but they weren't allowed to show it for too long I think. Oh okay. And this one they slice Harvey Ke- Keitel's head and they linger on it for a while. They're like we're gonna yeah. get this goddamn effect well, of this movie. I-, I believe his son throws a, a condom full of uh, holy water. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that he yeah. blessed at his own head. Uh-huh. They, they should have just blessed all the uh, water in their bodies and they could have went around with their blood and stuff. That's true. That would have been fun. <laughs> but so, so we, we talked about the characters before they get to the bar. I want to talk about everyone yeah. in the bar if we got, possible. Yeah, we got to mention Cheech Marin. Yeah. All three Cheech, of them. Cheech Marin has three roles in this movie. And it's interesting on the commentary, they say that each time they meet Cheech Marin, he plays a, a, an important part where he's like another step in their journey to hell. Yeah. So he's kind of at like the... 
in between each chapter. So first he's like the, the border agent. So that's when they cross over uh, to get into Mexico to go and hide away. And then when they're at the bar, he's the one who's like the, the bouncer or whatever when they get in. And then he's the one at the end where like they, you know, He's kind of like the whole reason Carlos, why they yeah. went there, yeah, in the first place. Yeah. He's yeah. Like, oh, how can I make it up to you? He's like, you can't. You just, you just can't. Make it up. Like, what were they, psychos? Psychos don't explode when sunlight hits. <laughs> yeah. I like how he's like, eh. he just makes fun of me. He's like, how about twenty percent? And they like, they like barter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's yeah. like right back into business. He's like, all right, well, let's let's yeah. uh, barter. It's funny because uh, his character at the end there reminded me of uh, when George Clooney in Up in the Air. You know, oh, yeah, that was one? a great movie. Where they, they like do a lot of that stuff in it. And yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, you know, this is fun. <laughs> But, uh, so everyone in the bar is fantastic, from Danny Trejo on down. Mm, Danny yeah. Trejo, yeah. Um, I, you know, I wish Danny Trejo, like, remember he goes, he's like, he's like, oh, and here comes, you know. Satanica, yeah. I forget the last name. Satanica Pandemonium. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of <laughs> Which hoping, Tarantino got from an older movie. Like, oh, movie that's movie. funny. I was, I was hoping Danny Trejo, during that little vest, I was hoping he was, it was going to be like Chippendales, he was going to start stripping. Oh. Like, <laughs> Did Danny Trejo die in this movie, or does he get away? Uh, no, he explodes. He, he, yeah, he explodes. Well, that's confusing, because he's in both sequels as the oh, same character really? so oh, I guess okay. the vampires just come yeah. back and they regenerate uh, I so love the band the band explodes which is also the oh, band at the beginning of Roadhouse was that uh, Tito and Tarantula or which I one think so I think okay, so yeah. um, they're the band at the beginning of Roadhouse and the main singer is the dude uh, Banderas like shoots in the face yeah. in uh, Desperado who's the one who's stalking him I, I think it's it, fun because he has the um, uh, like the, the man guitar yeah, <laughs> yeah it's the like a bunch of <laughs> and it's funny because if you look at like I want to I want to count you need to come up with a count of how long it takes from the first transformation till you see the man guitar I don't think it's <laughs> Someone in the bar. I think he had it. <laughs> he just brought it because it up. took like two minutes. I don't think he's doing all the stringing and are the strings human hair? Like, there's a lot I want to know about the instruments. And by the way, the, the, that band never sucks anyone's blood. They just they were there just yeah. to play the show like, and leave. Fuck you, everybody! <laughs> and then they explode. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Oh, oh my, my god. god! Has anyone watched any of the follow-ups? No, but um, I mean the one sitting up there. <laughs> any of the how many? I, I have there's, because there's no like. Well, you, Danny Trejo is in some of them. That's yeah, not, that's one reason. The I've like, seen the second one, which I own. It's over there. Okay. I mean the store owns it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Don't break it's, the fourth it's okay. wall, Tony. Yeah, yeah. Robert Patrick's in it. It's okay. It's like it's like they're doing like a bank heist, but then it goes wrong because one of the guys in the bank heist turns into a vampire. He starts turning them all slowly into vampires. And it's all right. It's real low budget. Mm. I never saw the third one, but I want to talk about like I finally gave the TV show a shot. Oh, okay. And the first season is a remake of the movie, and it is great. It, like it changes the story enough because mm -hmm. you don't want to see the same thing over and over again. Mm. But it stretches it out. Um, the Tarantino character being crazy, they tie that more to the vampire, so it's not mm. like like he's being drawn. But it's reboot. It's not like it doesn't. Fuck no, no, it's a reboot. Yeah. It's a reboot. Uh, but it's really good. Uh, the Selma Hayek character is more mm -hmm. important because in the movie she like mm -hmm. dies right away. Yeah. You feel like she's like the main bad they and she's just gone. A lot. Yeah, she's, yeah, she, she gets she it gets. Out. It's it's really good. And uh, Fez from that '70s show is two of the Cheech Marin characters, oh, and he's like really good. At, super bloody and violent. Mm -hmm. Rodriguez directs a few episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny Trejo apparently shows up later on in the show, so I'd say give that a shot. I, I at mean, least the first season I liked. It's kind of like you were saying how if you're gonna why, don't reboot a movie, make a new TV series. Make a TV mm -hmm. show because then you can linger on some of the ideas, mm -hmm. expand on it. I thought it was really really good, but yeah. better than the sequels. Even though Robert Patrick from Two plays the Harvey Keitel character in the show, so they oh, bring okay. back a lot of the people. Oh, yeah. okay, he's the priest. But from Dust to Dawn, one of my favorite vampire movies. Yeah, have, have, have any of you guys played um, Left 4 Dead at all? No. Really? You yeah, played? I have, yeah. Um, there's two scenes, and Left 4 Dead is like four characters. It's a like multiplayer where they go and do like this whole zombie thing. You know, you guys would like it. Um, mm. And there's a scene where they all pose, and it's very much Left 4 Dead. Like, remember the scene where they're, it's the four guys in front of the stage? Yeah. And at the end, when all four of them have the weapons? Yeah. I like to kind of do like a little comparison of like the games. Because <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like the poses are exactly the yeah. same. Yeah, yeah. So this movie reminded me more of like video, like video games than <laughs> other horror stuff I've seen. I don't know. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, good time. So, so I still have like half a page of notes for Dustin. <laughs> I'll just like to go highlight just the. Yeah. the you just have like button. read them down. Yeah. <laughs> One thing, there's a really funny outtake which uh, I showed you on the oh DVD. Oh my god. George Clooney, he in the, it's it's the, the in the opening scene in the convenience store when he's got the gun to the clerk mm -hmm. and he's got the girl by the hair and it's like he has to say this line like I'm gonna turn this place into Benny's world of blood or whatever yeah and he can't get the line and he's 
they do it over and over, and he gets so fucking pissed that yeah. like, he hits the table. And, and here's yeah. like, the whole time, he's holding onto the actress's head. I want him out of here, in his car, and down the street, or I will turn this place into fucking... God damn it. I want him in his car and down the road, or you change... Fuck. No, I want him in... Sorry. I What's want up? him out of here, in his car, and down the road, or you can fuck! Yeah. And freak it out, you can tell she's like, terrified. Yeah. Cause like, I don't think you guys notice, like, watching bloopers, everyone mm. laughs, but all of you have, guys have been on set where someone mm. can't get a line out and it goes on for a while, it's really uncomfortable. It can be, yeah. Yeah, and like, imagine just being that actress for mm. hours, George Clooney's yeah. just holding your hair, and he breaks character, he screams, he's hitting things, I would be mortified. Well, that's, that's me right now. <laughs> <laughs> So, of course, mention, like, th th in this movie, I think they invented more ways to kill a vampire in than any other movie. I don't mean, like, with the lore, but, like, mm. the ways in which they impale them. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's the, the pencil and the heart, <laughs> and they have the heart outside the body, and as long as the heart is stabbed, yeah. then the vampire's dead. Then there's the four table legs, where he throws uh, four of them onto the, the table, and you got that overhead shot. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Then you got, um when they're twisting the stakes and everything, like they're on the commentary, they're cracking up over that. Like, what does the twisting do? Like, why do they have to twist? <laughs> and they also talk about the reason the vampires bleed green is because when they were writing it, they knew that this was gonna push an NC-17 rating. Yeah. Oh. So they basically decided like, how about instead of um, making the blood red, let's just make it green. Mm. And that passed. So basically on the commentary, Tarantino is, is cracking up saying like, okay, the MPAA, they don't like, it's not that they don't like gore, they just don't like the color red. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last thing I'll leave it at is the ending is so great um, with that big matte shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's which, which I think Robert Rodriguez has that matte painting in his house. Yeah, yeah he, he does. Talking about. I would love to get a poster of that. That thing's yeah, great. Yeah, it, it's so awesome. And then not just the way it looks, but the idea that you see yeah. that they're not the only like uh, truckers that come by. Yeah. There's just but, yeah. like all these. Like, well, uh, if you, yeah. if, like, I, I, mean, I don't know about, you know, trucking history, but there's <laughs> trucks in there that are clearly from like the 40s and yeah. 50s, like newer to the bottom, and there's like, as they go up, they get newer mm -hmm. and more high tech trucks. But that's another thing. Uh, the TV show, they explore more of that temple, which is pretty cool. Oh, cool. And uh, oh, one last thing about the show yeah. Jake Busey is sex machine in it, and you oh, don't God. know he's sex machine for like five episodes <laughs> until he whips out the dick gun. You're like, Wait, that's who he is? <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, it's a great movie. Yeah. So Mike, what'd you think uh, from Dust Till Dawn? Any final words? I'll have to watch it sometime when I'm not drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Next week on Rental Reviews, the gang reviews Event Horizon. Featured today is the official Eddie Spaghetti VHS Halloween Companion Volume 2, a full six hours of Halloween-themed episodes, specials, commercials, and more. Check out the Facebook page for the OSI 74 Network series Here Lies for more details on how you can snag your own free copy and make this year's Halloween the best ever. Thank you for watching Cinemassacre Rental Reviews. Take a look at our other videos, and if you'd like some Cinemassacre merchandise, head over to ScreenWaveStore.com. <laughs>